Welcome back, everyone. This is the first of three lessons in calorimetry. This lesson's on heat transfer and temperature change for one object. Uh, let's go over a, a couple of important key terms first. The uh, first key term is heat. Heat is a measure of the total amount of kinetic energy of the particles in a substance. It's measured in joules. Heat is also considered a form of energy. Now, let's look at this concept a little deeper. So we have a substance here, let's say a substance with uh, three different particles. The particles are moving at different speeds, different velocities. So uh, all together, this substance with the three particles moving at different speeds has a certain amount of kinetic energy. So the total Ke in this system is the amount of heat in the system or in the substance. Now let's look at a different term. The next term is temperature. Temperature is a measure of the average, the average kinetic energy of the particles in a substance. And it's measured in Kelvin or degrees Celsius. Commonly we, we think of it as uh, in the United States as being measured in Fahrenheit. So when I talk about average, I'm looking at the average. So let's say I have a, let's bring in a fourth particle here. This fourth particle is, is moving much slower. Uh, we have a, another particle. Let's, um, let's actually change the speed of one of these particles. So one of these particles is moving incredibly fast, so much faster than the other ones. Uh, now, they're all moving at different speeds, the different, uh, so they all have different kinetic energies. The average kinetic energy of the particles tells you what is the temperature. Okay, last, last term, specific heat capacity uh, given by the variable C. Specific heat capacity is a measure of how much heat is required to change the temperature. So how much heat do you need to change the temperature of a substance? The higher the specific heat capacity, the more difficult it is to change the temperature. For example, let's, uh, let's look at the example of water. So water has a high, has a high C, a high specific heat capacity. This means that it could take a lot of heat, you have to add a lot of heat to water in order to change its temperature. So let's look at some of the actual, um, and actual formulas that we'll need to know. Uh, we'll look at formulas for uh, the one formula that we'll need to know. So the one formula that we need to know is Q equals MC delta T. So Q equals MC delta T. Q is our uh, variable for heat. M is our variable for mass. C is our variable for specific heat capacity. And then delta T is the actual uh, temperature change. So this is specific heat capacity. And uh, this is the actual change in temperature. So this formula relates mass, specific heat capacity, and the change in temperature. You can see in this formula that if you increase the specific heat capacity, so if you find a substance with a high specific heat capacity, it takes a lot of heat in order to change that temperature. Let's go over some of the uh, variables. Q is for heat and the units in joules. M is mass, and that's in kilograms. C is the, uh, basically the, the other new term except for Q, and that's for specific heat, and the units are in joules per kilogram Kelvin. Uh, 